So welcome teachers. It's Saturday and more or less every Saturday we are meeting. I'll try to make it more continuous from now on. And today we are going to discuss about GeoGebra 3D application, which you can use in your uh, different projects, middle school, high school, no matter. And uh, I'll go through from basics to some pro type uh, commands. And I hope this will definitely help you and uh, you will use more frequently GeoGebra in your lessons. So there is a GeoGebra 3D app. You don't need to download, it's available online. I have a link here. I can send you if you need, but I'll show you how you can actually get it. So what I have to do, you just need to go to geogebra.org. And here you will see app downloads. You don't need to download this uh, and you can work online. Download option is there, but you can go ahead with start because it's also available online. So just hit start and you are on this 3D platform. So when you are on 3D platform, you will see two things. The first is algebra and second is tools. It's plus button also available uh, for expressions or any help. Make sure you have already created your account. You can see my name is here and I can edit my profile or just sign out. What I am saying because whatever things you are gonna do on this, you can save it and reuse it. I think I have already uh, shown in previous meetings as well, the 3D creation. Last time I was showing this, rotation about X axis, the staircases and other things. This is, I remember, I did share with everybody this. So this is a activity for class 12 students for those who were actually doing some volume related questions. So you can increase and decrease the width or height, then you can spin it just to show. I'll, I'll help you out how you can create like this. Second thing was this may take time because uh, sometimes files, they are heavier because lots of things we have used. This is how you can manipulate whatever you create in 3D. This is actually the real life model I created based on the scale basis. Okay, any question before we start? Let me tell you again, uh, you don't need to download this. Of course, if you download, then also you can work offline. But for now, you don't need to download it. You just go geogebra.org and you would see there are options in app downloads, 3D calculator. So hit start and you will be on this blank canvas. Then 3D and yeah, it's a, so first thing I'll tell you, because uh, you should be working in terms of coordinates, right? I'm just entering one random point so that you will get to know which colored axis is X and Y and Z. Of course, the blue is Z axis always. And, uh, but let me just type one coordinate, three comma one comma, let's say zero. Now you can see on which axis I am on three units. So it's actually red. So red axis is for X and green is for Y and blue is for Z axis. Because uh, generally this is the confusion because it's not mentioned here. So if uh, you want, uh, I can write here, but there is no option here, right? 
So red is x-axis, green is y-axis, and blue is always the z-axis or z-axis. So let me just delete this point. And you can see this, let's say, okay, what I'm gonna do is I have used sliders in previous uh, meetings as well. Same thing you can do here. Type any alphabet, let's say A equals to B equals B, C equals five. I just enter random alphabets, A, B, and C. What you have to do, enter a number equals to a number, that's it. Automatically, it will generate a slider for you. Now, what I wanted to show you, let's say you want to create a random point A, B, and C. Now, I'll, I will show you what is the effect of every slider so that you understand better the x-axis thing, because that's the first thing. Look at this now. It's just going from left to right, right? If I just change A, because the coordinates are changing. Right now, X coordinate is negative 3.5. And you can imagine where is my point going, right? Let me make Z zero, then you will understand better. Because C is my Z axis, so I have uh, put it zero. Now you can move B, look at this. You are going front and back, right? And with A, you are going left and right. So this is something which you can use to demonstrate how X, Y, and Z axis work, works in actually three-dimensional system. Now, if I move my slider C, it will take me either up or down. So you can give this perspective based on this coordinate. So it's very easy. And you can create any segment, any line. Let's say I have a point zero, 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 because that is always origin. And now if I want to create a segment, I'm gonna just type segment, points are A and B, very simple. So my segment is, ready. And if you want to show uh, the other things like, okay, what is the perpendicular distance of this point from x-axis, from y-axis, and from z-axis, definitely you can do. You just need to play very smart here. Just move that point from zero, and I will hide it so that I don't move it. See, this is the always a good idea. The point in which you don't want to change, just hide it from here. Because if I keep it on, I, my mouse click will be there. I'm just gonna hide it. Please keep on asking your questions if you have any, so that I can actually answer. Look, I can bring it down, left, right, anywhere. Okay, so from tools, there are lots of things what you can do. Look, move, point, pyramid, cube, sphere, plane, intersect two surfaces or net. This is what we discussed last time as well. And I can discuss today as well. There is no harm that I can't discuss. And there are more things which you can explore. Solids, cube, sphere, prism, and uh, cylinder, cone, etc. Rotation, you can definitely rotate and find out volume, distance, area. You can rotate, move wherever you want to move. Look, I'm moving now up, down, wherever you want to place it. Slight disturbance is there. I'm just putting you on mute so that. You can unmute yourself if you want to ask any question. So you can move the graphic and you can rotate it. Just uh, click on your left uh, 
mouse button and then you with the other hand you can just move it it's in okay so this is done if I, you click on home it will recheck where it was based on the things now first thing let me just use let me just delete this and create a solid and based on that you can create a net of this uh, or different you can also connect different solids there is no look whenever you type any solids name let's say you want to type cube c u b e as soon as you type you will see different options available for you which means we can create cube from three different methods. Number one, cube from a square, cube from three points, or cube from two points and a direction, right? So whichever, whichever way you feel comfortable, you can go ahead with that. And uh, otherwise, what you can do, let me just delete it. You go to tools and you select here, cube selected now it says select two points that's it so you have to select two points let's say number one and number two done my cube is ready most important thing once you are done on this part please move to your cursor and click on this move button this is why i'm recommending what happens when you click on any option available on GeoGebra 3D, even on GeoGebra 2D, that current command will stay active with that mouse if you don't click here. So make sure you just click on move before you move your graphic or you just want to see from different perspective. Now what you can do, you can decrease or increase because this is based on our slider, right? Look at this, we can bring it down and we can move it wherever we want. You can go to algebra on the left hand side. I think it's not 100%. Yeah. Okay, it's better now. You go to algebra and you can play with these sliders. Look at this. Because I'm changing the A coordinate of that. If you want to keep C0, that would be great. You can put it at zero. Look. And based on your A and B, you can just play around, right? Look, you can increase or decrease. Only x-axis values are changing now. So that's how you can play around. Look, if my A is zero, what's gonna happen? Now the cube has gone down, right? because the coordinates are uh, zero to, or whatever it is, where is A? Actually the point A is here. This is the point. So that's why it is like that. And if you want to make B zero, you can move to A. Now you can see. So this is one way how you can create Otherwise, what you can do, just go to tools, click on cube icon and select two points. Let's say this is point where x is minus four, second is origin. That's it. Click on move and now you can say this because cube has a square surface. So if you change one, you can actually change both phase. Look, height is also changing. So this is one method. Second method, let me tell you, I'm just gonna delete it. Second method is, you just go to tools, don't create any cube, rather create a polygon. So I'm gonna create a regular polygon, okay? Regular polygon. So regular polygon, I'm gonna select two points 
and then it will ask me how many vertices I need. Sorry, action is vertices four five. Let's type six. So it will create a hexagonal shape for me. Right. I'm gonna click on move just to see it how it is. Right. Now I want to create a hexagonal prism. Right. So for that purpose, because if you use square and use the same command prism, you can create a, a you can say a square prism. If it is hexagonal based, then it's a hexagonal prism. This is really cool idea how you can do, create a regular polygon on the base and then go to algebra, type here prism, P-R-I-S-M, prism. It will ask you two things, polygon point, polygon or height, sum. I'm gonna choose second option, polygon and height value. So which is my base polygon? which is actually P-O-L-Y poly one. Look at this. So you have to type the same way, P-O-L-Y poly one. And the height, it's up to you. You want to enter four, five, seven, etc. It's up to you. Enter that and you will get that. This is really cool feature. And this is applicable for any particular polygon. I used hexagon here. You could use square, rectangle, or maybe Pentagon, anything. So you can see here, and you can demonstrate different things to your students. Let me also do one magic here. I'm gonna create a slider. Let's say H equals to three. Sorry, actually I already defined. I'm gonna use, let's say A equals, A is also defined, sorry. Just make sure the things which are already defined don't use those. So maybe I can just type H or HD just to show HD equal to three. Now it's a slider for me. I'm, I'm going back to prism, click there, remove four and type HD because HD is my slider. So hit. Now you can control height from this slider. Look at this. So you can use this feature in different types of modeling things. Let's say you have a solid in front of you and you want to ask guys, we are creating this solid exactly how it is. Measure its height or length, width and height and check this, this tool so that they can also become more familiar with this tool so that in higher grades and they become more proficient in this and they can use in different ways, right? Same way we are gonna do the cylinder. I'm gonna create a circle first. So circle, look, it's, it's gonna ask me circle point and radius, circle point and segment, circle from point to point, whatever. So I can use any option which I have. I'm gonna select first option, point. I'm gonna use, let's say the center is zero comma zero, zero, and then radius, let's say two or three, sorry, to delete this extra thing so that I can, okay, yeah, I'm not using the correct command here, circle point point and radius number, right? Circle point and radius number. Point is my zero comma zero comma zero, which is zero zero, and radius number is. It's strange mistake. I don't know what's happening. Let me go to tools, and create a circle from here. You have all the options here. Look, circle, circle with radius center and with radius. Let me just click this. First, second option, sorry. So I've selected the center. Okay, it was asking the direction, sorry, because uh, it, you have to decide which direction you are going to go. The direction I have selected, radius is three and I'll see my circle. Look at this, my circle is ready. Now I can go again on the algebra view to type cylinder. 
cylinder, circle and height. That's it. So circle is uh, lowercase c. You can see the name here. And height is same. I'm going to use the slider. Let's change the color because both are now in uh, red pink color. So let's go to settings and change its color. Okay, let, let's keep it green. Increase the opacity and just close it. Now you can hide the prism if you want and you can just play around with height and cylinder. Look at this. Uh, those extra points are just because the, we created the prism, right? So now you can see both things are changing because the height of both 3D objects are same. So this way you can actually create anything. You can also create a cone. So let's create a cone. Look, same option. Cone also will ask circle and height. Circle is C, height is HT. That's it. My cone is, it's not visible because it is inside. And you can see it if you decrease the opacity. So go to color and decrease its opacity. See now, everything is there. And with one slider, I'm able to control everything. And you can view from different. Look at this. How kids will actually look. This is in two dimensions now. And we, when you just rotate it nicely, you can demonstrate everything very nicely. You can increase the opacity. Let's say uh, the stuff is getting uh, taken out or the in the pottery classes, students are using 3D modeling classes, students are using this. So yeah, they can create, even in 3D printing also. They If they have this perspective, they can use easily use the uh, Tinkercad thing, which is useful for 3D printing, right? Where they can create their projects and then they can uh, print them in 3D. That's the motivation you can give them, how they should actually use uh, 3D calculator on GeoGebra. So I can hide other stuff if you don't want to see that. And I can control with one slider. And now next thing is you guys gonna tell me the shape you want to create here and with the height so that I can demonstrate everything again. Because I know when you are using this first time or second time, there are lots of questions. So please go ahead and I'm gonna create a new page so that I can create more solids. I'll show you other things also which are possible because my target is to show you also uh, create a vase from uh, different polygons, which is really, really great idea. I'll, I'm just asking one question here. Is there anybody who is doing only high school or most of you are in high school? High school, I mean to say class 11 and 12, so that I don't deal, uh, I don't talk much about these middle school stuff. Please let me know, and maybe in the chat you can write so that I can give you more uh, class 11, 12 things related to 3D. Okay, I'm just reading a chat, how to create a, create a base of polygons. Yeah, definitely, let us create a thing. You can clear all, just go here and clear it all so that you don't save it. You don't want to save it. Let me just read. A... Okay, cool. No issues. So I'll definitely tell you both middle and high, both of the things. So click on tools, go to either. Let's say you want to create a circle, then go to circle. Ellipse also you can use. And here you would definitely see there are options for polygon and a regular polygon, right? So you can create a irregular polygon also. There is no point. Let's create it. Uh, polygon, select all vertices, then first vertex again. 
So I'm gonna click on some random points to create irregular polygon. Look, so it's not actually proper quadrilateral, oh sorry, not a square or rectangle, it's just a, a quadrilateral. A four sided shape, like a kite, you can manage it. No problem, you just bring it. If you want to decrease height, width, whatever. Look, so my base is ready. Now I can go to algebra. And here I'm going to create the slider, which should be a different alphabet which we haven't used yet. How to connect vertices? Okay. Problem in 10 minutes, this uh, recording will stop. You can join back. I'm clearing everything again. Don't save and let me show you. So go to polygon, select any point on this grid. I will recommend you stay on X axis, Y axis and Z axis because otherwise you will not able to recognize easily where is my point. So click on X axis, let's say, and minus four. Then I'm going on the Y axis on four. And if I'm going to come to zero, and then I'm going back to A, where I started, I have to go back. Otherwise it will keep on moving from one place to another. So always keep this thing in mind. And now you go to your algebra view, create a slider, let's say, sorry, Okay, H is my slider because this H is not being used before. And now I'm gonna use prism, prism and polygon and point or height, whatever I want to use, I just want to use. So my polygon is T1, T1 and the height is H, right? And my polygon is ready. Look at this. Because of the direction of the polygon, it is going down. So if I go negative values, that's why it's coming up. Look, uh, triangular pyramid, sorry, prism is ready. So uh, you can give different tasks to students. They can create 3D houses, 3D, uh, whatever they want to create. And then they can measure it, actually create original stuff so that they get to know what is happening with my x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Yeah, cool. So this is the way how you can create. So this is a wonderful tool when you use uh, base and then use single command prism. It is valid for regular polygons, irregular polygons as well. So you can create any sort of thing, let's say cone or cylinder. For cylinder also, you could use the same way if you have a circle already. So let me just create a circle from zero, 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 radius is three, sorry, three comma, that axis. And this is my circle. You can go to tools also to create a circle. Now, if I create a prism, prism, not I'm not typing cylinder here, right? So, sorry, E is my circle and height is H. Circle E, polygon point. Okay, it means I have to go with only, that's what it says. Okay. They actually keep on updating these things, so no problem. Just type cylinder, S-Y-L-I, cylinder with circle and height. Look, you can just write minus. We are getting down, right? so that it, it works in the opposite direction. Okay, now I'm coming to the part where we can deal with rotations. And you can say rotation about x-axis, rotation about y-axis stuff, right? So if any, anyone has any question for this basic stuff, please ask. I think net we discussed already, if we haven't, let me show you once again. I'm just deleting this. So you can go to net and it will ask you to hit on the poly 
polyhedron, right? So you just click on any polyhedron and you can see easily the net. When you create that, automatically it will create a slider for you. Let me show you. I can show you again, don't worry. So what I have done, I created a random prism and then there is a command called net. So using that command, I'm creating a net of that polyhedron. This shape can be a regular or irregular. It's working fine. Look at this. Once you are familiar with these commands, then you can explore in more detail. Right now, these things are simple and easy to use. Let me show you the net command if anyone has difficulty here. I'm deleting everything from here, not saving anything here, and going to create, let's say the hexagonal stuff, right? Regular polygon, maybe a pentagon we can take. Okay, five-sided shape as the base. Will be ready. Yeah, it's there. Now I can go to height equals to two, let's say any, sorry, that's being used already, HT. Three, my slider is there. Prism, EOLY poly one and HT. Look at this. I can control it. Now I'm going to use the net facility. Look at this. In the tools, you will see this net. Select the polyhedron, select it, and my net is ready. Look at this. In the movement, you will see everything. It's super easy. Yeah. Look at this, even the shape was not only cube or cuboid and it's working fine with every 3D shape. You can stop it if you want. Stop the slider at one. If you want to keep it open, just to show the faces of that particular solid, right? You can definitely show that these are uh, four, five walls and uh, one is the top because it is, it will resemble with the base because that's how it's working. Look at this. So different ways are there which you can use this 3D. I hope this will definitely help you. Any questions? Uh, this is gonna end in two minutes. I would request you, once it's ended, please join back. I will definitely answer your questions and I will show you some uh, more things about 3D which are relevant to rotations or uh, maybe rotation about x-axis, y-axis and z-axis, etc. Because everywhere you can do that. Okay, I don't think so. There is any question. Let me just share with you if I save it. Uh, Pentagon. Pentagonal prism, right? Let me share with you in the chat right now so that you can actually use it. Everyone in the meeting. Okay, I just sent you and I think everyone got that link so that you can see how many things I have created there. So I'm just Stopping this recording and then we'll restart in a moment.